I was up front making a small fix to the lid of my engine compartment. Just adding a latch that's gonna keep it sealed down nice and tight. When it hit me, it's time. It's time to bust out a power tool that I have yet to use on this conversion project. The deal is that the fold down couch up front needs cushions. And here's my plan. I'm gonna make two cushions, upholster them similarly, each having a top piece and a bottom piece and then fabric sides that wrap all around the edges. And I don't really know the name for this approach to sewing and upholstering and making cushions and all that stuff. That's just because I'm not an upholsterer or an upholsterier or whatever you call it. You know what I mean. So the backstory is that for a while there, I was getting mattresses as free samples to test out and review online. Melissa knows all about this, it's kind of a wacky story. Anyway, I stashed away a few of those, I kind of stored them in the house for use on this project. And this is one of the thinner ones I had, and I think it's going to work really well for the cushions on that couch. My plan being to cannibalize the mattress cutting it down into my two couch cushions, then make covers for each cushion. This is 41 inches. That's the, the width of the bed. This is a queen size, so the bed's gonna be a little bit smaller than a queen size. So I'm gonna cut it right here. In need of a lot of fabric, I went to Joann's. And comparing it to say like a lumber or a steel yard, a fabric store has a few pluses in that you get to really browse the inventory. It's like hands-on, you can check out everything. They also play better music in there, which is why I had to mute out the sound on this part of the video to avoid a copyright strike. There's also a lot of different kinds of fabric like so many different kinds of fabric, all kinds of different patterns, and I found myself drawn to the Naga Hide pleather section, kind of thinking that might work out for the couch, but I finally settled on some blue duck, or duck cloth, I guess it's called. Pretty affordable, um, also really sturdy and thick, and the cool thing is that they had enough on hand right there uh, for the entire project. Now you might wonder, why am I making these cushions? Uh, by which I mean, why am I the guy doing it instead of finding like a skilled sewer or upholsterer person to do the work for me? The deal is that from the start on this prison bus conversion, my whole approach, like my whole perspective has been to do it all myself. Like DIY, do it yourself. The full thing, the full bus. And along the way, upcycling and reusing cheap materials as much as possible. Now, that's not to say that I haven't gotten help along the way. I totally have, and I've appreciated it. But I really wanted to learn new things on this project, to push myself into new kinds of fabrication, and working with new materials. And if I could teach myself to weld, I know I could teach myself to upholster cushions. Or at least I thought I could. This bus project has been all about working across materials, like working with metal and wood and doing plumbing and electrical work and mechanical stuff. And now, why not some sewing? I've got the top of the cushion cover and then I've got this sort of piece I'm running around the sides because I wanted to have some kind of like sharp edges. And uh, sewing that baby, that, that thing, the top to the side thing was good, the first thing. Um, God, this isn't sounding clear at all. Anyway, I've got the top piece, and then I've got the side, and I'm trying to, to sew the bottom piece to the side piece, and oh, it's killing me. Um, but I think I've got it. I think I've got it sort of figured out. So this is the top piece. These are my clamps. Uh, this is the side piece, and I think I've got that. You can see that. It's looking pretty sharp. This is the inside. Uh, you know, the outside should look better. Anyway, I've just got to sort of bring this piece around here and um, 
uh, make a corner. Corners are weird with fabric because, uh, you know, with like woodworking or steel or whatever, you get a corner. It's like a rough edge. This stuff is like, this is supposed to be a corner, but it's all wiggly. Um, anyway, uh, I'm gonna try to round the corner. There's just no way that in the end, what I end up with in this upholstery project is gonna be pro and perfect. It's just not gonna happen, but it's gonna be my best crack at it. And there's something that I think is just so satisfying in that. And that's the thing that I've thrived on all through this build. All right, now I'm thinking the thing to do, since I have uh, one open side, I have two open sides, is to like test drive this thing on the mattress. Oh, or you know what else I could do? I could put the mattress in there and try to sew this guy up with the mattress in it. Okay, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I might just sew it up and then stuff the mattress into it. All right, now, now look, you're watching someone do something that they've never done before. So if you're laughing and it looks ridiculous, it's because it is ridiculous. All right, so it's just about there. Um, I've got to line my lines up a little bit. It's a little bit twisted, but not too bad. And uh, the end here, the idea is that I'm going to kind of get it all right. And then I think I'm gonna sew it up by hand. I was gonna put Velcro down here, but I don't think this cover's coming on and off. So I think I'll sew it up by hand. And um, then I just need to do the other cushion. So next up was to complete my shower tiling job. One of those things that's just been sitting around for a long time. I started it a few months back before the cold weather set in. And I'm finally getting back to it now that it's warming up. And I cut some round holes in a rectangular tile and got to tiling up the shower stall. Now, many people these days are all about ultra waterproofing their shower stall and tub surrounds before they put up their tile. And if that's your deal and your approach, more power to you, I think that's great. But I gotta say that the way I see it, at least with this shower, is that my water barrier is the tile and grout itself. It's like a first line of defense and only line of defense. I've never really been all that keen on the idea of trapping any permeating water back behind the tile. So I kept it basic with the tile, but did, as you'll see, use a pretty hardcore elastomeric siliconized grout to seal up the seams. That's different than regular grout. And that's just gonna keep those grout seams from cracking when the prison bus is out on the road a rocking. Um, I think it's going okay. You can see that these single tiles over here are fitting pretty well on this side. I'm having to cut about an inch off of them, um, but that's not too bad. So no seams over here. Over here we got the uh, interlocking seams. This one right here is different than the others just because I wanted to uh, put the holes where I did and, and I think that worked out just fine. And while the tile adhesive set up, I added a few more deck screws up top to keep my boards from cupping. Uh, thanks to everyone who suggested that. That's really helpful. Ooh. 
And I also uh, got back in the bus and sanded down the bed area just to clean it up. And after that, I sealed it with polyurethane. Then I got to working on that siliconized grout I was talking about. And it's really kind of a bear to apply and get right. Uh, just because of all the silicone, I found that a sponge helped just like with regular grout. And finally, it was looking pretty good. Oh, and this is a totally random thing. Uh, someone sent me a few LED light bulbs to try out, so I installed them in my bulletproof light fixtures in the bus, thinking they'd brighten things up a bit. Whoa, that is just like a beast of a light bulb. Um, we'll have to check it out tonight and see if it's too bright. I think it's too bright. It's just blinding. It's just really crazy bright. You can't actually look at it. Like straight away, it's just so bright. So uh, thanks for the free light bulb, but I don't think it's gonna work in this application. It would be ideal if you needed like a power of the sun light bulb. In this case, I guess I just need something a little bit more subtle. And then a bit more trim around the shower area and the bed and some more polyurethane. And at that point it was time to bring in the queen size mattress, which is another freebie that I had stashed away in the house for a good long time. Sorry about that, Melissa. Uh, it was kind of a tight fit getting the queen size mattress first into the bus and then into the bed area, but with some squishing and pulling and stuff, it did fit. And man, to get that mattress in there was really awesome. Uh, at this point, my microphone glitched out again on my camera, but I can tell you that as I was lounging around, what I was just talking about was how awesome the bed was, and I was just going on and on. What I should have been doing was finding some sheets for the bed and a blanket and pillows and all that kind of stuff. Now, the dealio with the folding couch up front is that the small cushion is gonna ride up there all the time. Kind of a fix somehow, maybe some Velcro or snaps or something. And then the big cushion, which is a little, just a little bit more wobbly and cumbersome, that one's gonna ride in the back with the bed as a sort of headboard cushion. And then when the front bed is folded down, say we got some Hells Angels sleeping over or whatever, the two blue cushions will be reunited up front and serve as the mattress for that folding couch. I guess that bed needs sheets and pillows and all that stuff too, some of which can be stashed away in that drawer under the folding couch. Thanks for checking out this stage of the build and for keeping with me through this kind of long project. Uh, next up, I've got some propane hose to run and a few more odds and ends to uh, tidy up before the big job of painting the exterior of the bus. Uh, I've really got to do that, saying it here, maybe that's going to help make it real. I hope you get a chance to go make something cool, and I'm going to see you in my next build video.